here to talk about um, time management today, working smarter, not harder, and um, the alchemy of productivity. And um, at first glance, alchemy and productivity have nothing to do with each other, but we're gonna find out how that works and how I'm gonna bring it together. This is me. Um, I am, what I said, currently based uh, in the Netherlands, in the North, but I consider myself more a citizen of the world, not so much uh, for just one country. Uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, we're all stuck at home, uh, working from home, which for me is, is normal, but um, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting uh, out there again. And I am a virtual assistant and I help my clients with streamlining their administrative and technical workloads so that they can focus on what they do best. And um, today we're gonna to talk about productivity. And, and that's something that comes up with uh, a lot of my uh, clients. Therefore, I call myself a productivity enthusiast. I would never call myself an expert because that would mean that I know everything. And um, that's definitely not true. I'm looking at Slido and um, a lot of people have put something in and they the thoughts that come up are a lot is agenda. So that's definitely something that we're gonna talk about. Um, sporadic, says someone. Uh, total lack of, that's also um, might not be good. Um, efficiency, exciting, self-organization, money times you to well, that is This is an interesting uh, interesting one. So we're gonna look at it again at the end of the presentation because I have two, uh, two more questions. Uh, but first we're gonna talk about the alchemy of productivity. So first we'll have to look into what is actually alchemy and why it has nothing to do with productivity um, right now. So alchemy is the seemingly magical process of transformation, creation, or combination. And again, at first glance, it has nothing to do with time management, but we're, we're getting there. So what is time management? Everybody has some sort of idea, but this is an official definition, and I focused mostly on productivity. So the process of planning, exercising control of time spent, Time management allows you to work smarter, not harder, and it increases effective, effectiveness, efficiency, and I focus on productivity. Um, so what is the purpose of alchemy to turn base metals into gold? Again, no link to time management. What is the purpose of time management? To increase the productivity, efficiency, and effectiveness. If you put that together, so turning metal into gold and turning it to increase productivity, efficiency, and effectiveness, you will get my um, alchemy of productivity to transform, create, or combine the work that you're already doing in such a way that you become more productive, therefore creating your own gold. And obviously, depending on your type of business, it's, it's, it varies what your gold is, but that's what we're, we're looking for. So um, the standard definition of productivity is defined as a ratio between outputs and inputs. But I like to add the word personalized because if you're um, an artist and you, you paint pictures, that's a totally different way of working than, uh, for instance, for me, uh, I work on my computer. So my output and input is totally different. So a personalized ratio between the output and the input, that's very important. To look at what we, some skills and strategies, um, that's what we're gonna do next. And at the end, we're gonna look at some practical approaches on how we're gonna use those skills and strategies. So what's important to start your day with clear focus. That's the number one productivity strategy there is. If you don't know what you're doing, then you're basically just running around like a chicken with his head cut off. So that's not what you want. You want to have clear focus. So um, you set your goals so you know, you know what you're going to be working on for that day. And um, to use a dynamic task list is the most important tool um, to start your day with clear focus. Otherwise, you have to keep it all in your head. And, that would make it so much more harder to outsource and to even remember. Um, using a dynamic task list is key, but it's important to include all your tasks. So if you have to make an appointment to go see a doctor, you have to put that on your task list. Otherwise, if it's not on your list, then it's not there. 
And um, maybe you noticed that I'm using the word task list and not to-do list because I don't like being told what to do. So I use the word task list. Um, but again, if you prefer to-do list, that's totally fine. Another thing which is really important is to focus on high value activities. I think most of us have heard the term um, eat the frog first or eat the frog, which means that um, we tend to procrastinate on tasks that we don't like to do. And um, we just keep them, put them off. And, um, but if we do them first, that makes us feel more productive. And it also helps us with the rest of our day. Because we feel more productive, we actually are more productive. So if we start with those hard tasks at the, the first, first thing in the morning, that's at the top of our list, then you, you feel more productive and the rest of your day will flow uh, much, much easier. And again, also look at which activities you have that have the most positive effect on your project, your client, your team, whatever it is that you're, you're doing and watch out for time wasters. We're gonna get into what those time wasters uh, actually are, but um, that's one thing um, that's not productive. And again, minimize interruptions. That's easier said than done. Do not get distracted. Well, we're human, so we all get distracted by everything that surrounds us, our pets, our children, or whatever. But um, we're trying to minimize um, our distractions. Another thing is limit multitasking. Our brain is not designed for multitasking. Our brain can only do one thing at a time. And even though I'm a woman and I think I can do six things at once, but unfortunately studies show that uh, I actually can't. So if you're doing more than one thing, you're doing one thing uh, for 50% and one thing for 30% and the other, again, for like 20%, I don't know, I'm not good at math, so I don't know if that's 100%, but um, again, multitasking does not work. And um, so, a thing that we're gonna discuss is plan your weeks in blocks. So you can actually focus on one thing and one task. And, and again, if it happens, just notice it, catch yourself and think, oh, maybe I need to put my phone down while I'm writing this email because I might need to focus on this email. Last uh, skill or strategy is review your day. And I don't mean write a journal about what, your, what was your day and not nothing like that but just take five minutes to think about what you did that day review your task list maybe rearrange it and um, then you can like end your work day um, with a with feeling good and actually have an end to your work day because that's especially with freelancers and people working from home there is a really difficult uh, divide between work and home and where does your day end so reviewing your day and reviewing your task list, getting everything ready for the next day is a great way to end your day saying to your brain, this is the end, I'm gonna move on to my spare time now. Um, we're gonna look into some practical things. So um, starting your day with focus using dynamic task list and high value activities all surround lists. Uh, a to-do list. Again, I like to call it a task list because I don't want like to be told what to do. But th the main thing is the list characteristics. Take a simple, digital, easily accessible way to craft your list. And what I mean by that is I've had clients who spend 30 minutes a day rewriting their uh, manual uh, handwritten task list. That's 30 minutes wasted because Nobody wants to rewrite their task list. So um, digital tasks li task lists are the easiest. And I mean, I'm a fan of a notebook and a pen for, for quick notes and everything, but just not for my task list. So make it simple, make it digital and make it easily accessible. Um, and what I mean by easily accessible is that uh, we tend to be distracted by very shiny objects like you know, project management tools. Um, we're going to come to that in the distractions. But um, if you have to take 10 steps to get to your, um, to your task list, then it's, it's a waste of time. It, it needs to be easily accessible because it's a tool. It's not a, a task in itself. Um, 
speaking about time wasters, um, as you can see, I'm not a big fan of meetings. That's why I put five exclamation marks uh, behind it because I feel that a lot of meetings are being organized for the sake of it and don't really add anything to my day or to the people that attend the meeting. So um, if, if you're like me and you have to meet people face to face, either one on one or in groups, um, be very careful with uh, your time. So set your calendar default to 30 minutes, because if we set it to uh, standard is 60 minutes. So if we send an invite, for instance, in Gmail or whatever, it goes out for 60 minutes and you sit in that meeting for 60 minutes. And that's a waste of 30 minutes of your time because you're actually, your business is done in 30 minutes and then the other 30 minutes is filled with talking about the weather, about politics or about COVID or about whatever, which is great, but it, it can be a waste of time. Another thing with meetings is provide an agenda. So for me, no agenda is no meeting. So if I don't know why you're scheduling this meeting, then I have to decline it. So an agenda is, is key. Another thing, if you are like me and you have uh, over 10 various uh, email accounts and not all of them are Gmail, use a proper email program. It was driving me nuts to go into uh, Gmail and into the browser version of Gmail to get to my various Gmail accounts. And then I had to look into other uh, email apps. So it was driving me crazy. So try to get all your email into one uh, proper program. Last time waster, and I'm afraid this is the biggest one and that's searching for something. Use a proper filing system. And this time is way too short to go into what an actual proper filing system is. But um, my experience with my clients is that they are losing hours in their day searching for that slide because they have to, they know they have some slides on a specific subject, but they just don't know where. So they have to go into their computer and look through all the files on their computer and on their hard drive or wherever. Um, so make sure um, to use a proper filing system because that is going to save you so much time. It's not a sexy one, but it's a very, uh, very useful one. Um, we're moving on to our interruptions. Um, everybody is always on in these days. And that's great on one hand, but again, our brain can only do one thing. So if we are actually focusing on our work um, and we get a notification that there is an email, we're like, a, we're like a dog with a ball. Our focus goes to that little red dot with the number one and we, we're, our brain is focused on that email and not on the work that we're actually doing. So turn off your notifications on your phone on your digital watch, on your whatever device that you're using and close your email uh, app when you're not using it. Because no matter what, we're gonna be focused on our email. Another thing is if we have a bigger task, break it down into smaller subtasks. Because if you focus for 15 minutes, the likelihood of you being distracted is much smaller than if, um, you're doing a task that you have to focus on for an hour. So break up tasks, clean up your desk. And especially uh, for those of us who have to work uh, on the kitchen table, if there's dishes everywhere and if there's bills and everything, it's just a distraction and it doesn't let your mind go into the working mode. So that's very, uh, very important. And again, we all get distracted. Someone um, has pets and their, their dog comes up to them or there's a package that's being delivered. So that's totally normal. So when you do get dis get distracted, just get up, stretch, get a cup of coffee or whatever, and then focus back onto your smaller uh, broken down task. And again, when you finished, give yourself a reward, give yourself a pat on the back saying, well done, I'm, uh, I, I've done my task without getting, uh, getting distracted. Um, We'll be moving on to uh, multitasking um, because again, we, we, we just can't do that. So in order to 
limit multitasking because we can never really avoid it, but trying to limit multitasking is using time blocks in your calendar. This is the most important thing. If, if you only take away one thing, take away time blocks in your calendar. Um, and because a lot of people are giving away their best time. So if, you, if you're like me and you have to schedule meetings, I'm a morning person. So I do my best work in the morning. So if I go and schedule all my meetings in the morning, I'm giving away my most productive time. So what I do is I block my time in the morning for work where I actually have to get some stuff done and I do my meetings in the afternoon. So whatever type of blocks uh, you want to create, that's that's all up to you depending on, on your business. But it's important to make a time block calendar and again, be flexible about them, but that's your backbone, that's your structure. And again, for instance, uh, I put in travel time blocks because well, a lot of us are doing meetings online these days, but once we're back to meeting in real life, those 30 minutes that you're sitting in traffic or having to take a bus or a train, you're not able to be productive. So if someone, for instance, schedules a meeting in that time, then, you, then you're in trouble. So make sure that you use blocks to schedule um, your, uh, your calendar. That's the main, main thing. And what I say for email, check maximum two or three times a day. No one's gonna die if uh, you don't answer an email unless you work in an ER and then I hope that they don't send you emails. Um, so multitasking, within those designated time, <clears throat> time blocks, make sure to stack your tasks. So if you have, uh, for instance, writing tasks, you can write for various clients. So organize those writing tasks in one work block. So you don't have to switch um, devices or you don't have to switch uh, software. Um, that makes you just, makes you more uh, efficient. And you usually have a little bit of time between time blocks and that's, a great opportunity to use for a smaller leftover tasks like phone calls, making that appointment with the doctor or uh, whatever, or just take a break or walk around the block, giving yourself some, uh, some exercise. That's always a good thing after um, being at work all day. And at the end, review your day. Well, I said earlier, it doesn't have to be a whole journal entry about how, you made, how your day made you feel, but just review your task list, rearrange your task, uh, tick off the things that you've done, um, maybe create your, your priorities for the morning so you have a, a good start in the morning and then switch off. That's also very important. So work day is done, switch off, and then you're off to your, your free time. Um, last, but not least, there are a lot of tools uh, that can help us. Um, for instance, what a game changer was for me, and I assume for a lot of um, a lot of you writers don't have any trouble getting uh, stuff onto paper, but I'm not a writer. So uh, what really helps me is using the dictation um, option in Microsoft Word. Then I can just talk out loud, get something on paper and then edit it later. That's was a game changer for me when writing text or blogs or whatever. So maybe that's also helpful um, for you guys. Another one is email templates. If you tend to send a lot of the same type of emails, take some time to craft uh, templates. Most uh, apps will allow um, templates. Um, so it will save you a lot of time if you have to rewrite the same uh, type of uh, emails over and over again. Uh, time tracking apps is not so much about saving time, but it's good to use so you know how you spend your time in order for you to see where you can get more efficient. And the last one is a project management software. And I put behind that, be careful with this one, because again, it's a very shiny object and uh, we can get carried away into using them and uh, creating all sorts of crazy um, spreadsheets and everything. And it's costing us so much time to maintain um, that we're actually losing time and not uh, winning time. 
and that's definitely not something uh, that we want, but they can definitely be uh, a tool. I, I'm a big fan of Notion, so that's what I use, but um, yeah, it depends on, on your type of business.